Hey everyone, Mark from Miroc Corvette back with you here today with another detailed C4 Corvette video. And well, recently we were able to get our hands on a uh, couple of C4 Corvette key fobs. And yeah, these things, they're, they're a little bit hard to find in recent times here. And being that I had a few of them here, I was taking a little time out uh, working on uh, one of my personal cars here behind me, this 95 convertible and going over the PKE system, getting it back up and operational, and figured it was a good time to go and uh, make a video on the uh, passive keyless entry systems, or PKE systems, for the 1993 to 96 Corvettes. Now these key fobs here, we, we have been getting a number of requests for these fobs here uh, recently, and you know, like I said, can't always find them, and then a lot of owners that do get them, they kind of struggle to understand, you know, how the system fully works. And being that I had this car here uh, with some parts off of it, I figured it was a good chance to go and dive into that a little bit further. Now, I know that there's some other uh, YouTube videos out there on the passive keyless entry system, and they go over the operational procedures and the programming of them. And uh, what I wanted to do here was just go a little bit further and uh, go over some of the different components of the system uh, itself, like the key fob, the antenna, and the PKE module. But jumping back to the fobs for a moment, you know, these fobs, they were, um, they were very fragile, and a lot of them ended up getting damaged, and a lot of owners then, you know, original owners that got them, they didn't keep the fobs on their keychains anymore, they got shoved away in the drawer, and so whenever the cars got sold and went down the line to the you know, following owners, the key fobs usually didn't get carried along and transferred with the sale of the car, leading for the key fobs to be a part that you know, some people are commonly looking for. Uh, but for us as part providers, it makes it just as difficult because a lot of times the cars that we get, we generally don't get a key fob with those cars either. So that's kind of the reason that it makes them a little bit more difficult to find at times. Um, but anyways, you know, this video here, we're going to cover the 9396 system, uh, dive through some of the different components here and take a look at some of the components in the car here behind me. So the first thing we're going to start here with is the PKE module, and this is the brains for the entire keyless entry system. So the module, it's located up underneath the dash, and since we have the dash out in this car, I'll point out for you here, it's located right down in here. This is your seatbelt chime, and the module is located directly below that. Now, if you have a situation where you do need to replace this module, you're going to have to remove the dash out of your car to be able to access it. Now, since I know people are going to ask, I'm going to give you the very quick, rundown, dirty way that uh, you're going to go to remove the dash out of one of these cars. First, you're going to start with dash vents. You're going to take your three dash vents out along the front, left, center, passenger side dash vent. Then you're going to remove the defroster dash vent, the one that sits up on top here. You're going to remove your center console lid. I know it seems strange removing a dash, but you got to take the center console lid off. Get the center console lid off. That allows you to pull the shifter bezel up. When you get the shifter bezel up, you don't have to take the shift knob off. Just get the shifter bezel loose out of the way. That'll allow you to get to the lower screws of the radio bezel. You'll be able to pull the radio bezel off then. Then on the passenger side, you're going to have to go remove the trim around the fuse bezel or the fuse panel. Sorry. You also have to take the lower dash trim off. Your 93 is going to be a little different than the 94, 5, 6. 93 is one piece that comes around for the dash. The carpet is part of the dash on the 93. 94, 5, 6, you'll have a lower panel there that you take off. And then after that, you would go take out the screws in front of your dash, the ones up at the top by the defrost, grab your dash in the front, give it a tug backwards, it's going to pop out for you. Now, once you get the dash out, to go and then get this module out, you just want to unhook your chime module. It's Velcroed to the top of the PKE. Pull that out of place. You have a piece of duct work up here for the uh, dash vent. You may have to take the screws out of that just to pry it up out of the way a little bit. Leave yourself a little bit more room to pull that PK, uh, PKE module out of there and replace it. So before you would go spending money on a replacement key fob, if you happen to find one, 
it's a really good idea that you go and check and make sure that the PKE module in your car is good before you purchase that uh, so that you don't have to go into replacing it. Now, like I said, this is the brains for the system. This is going to actually communicate with the CCM or body control module of the car uh, so that it knows when the key is in the ignition, when a door is open or closed, so that this thing can actually perform correctly. Uh, but so anyways, if you want to go and just at least check that you can get this into programming mode before you do uh, purchase a key fob, that's a good thing to do. So we're going to go put this car here. We're going to put it into programming mode. So I'm going to go turn the key on. We can see the passive keyless light showed up for a second there, but we're going to press the trip odometer button twice and we're going to press and hold the fuel info button. Now it's going to take about oh, maybe 10 seconds or so for us to uh, hold this in there. And eventually that PKE light is going to turn on. And that means, okay, we're just about ready to go into programming mode. We're not there yet, but I'm going to stop here at this point, because if you get to this point with the car and you are not getting that PKE light to turn on and you didn't see it turn on whenever you first turned the key, then you may have a problem with the PKE module. Um, the first thing that you would do is, you know, well, is my bulb bad in the DIC? Uh, there are different steps to follow through. If you have your service manual, you can go and follow down through the steps. Another quick check would be, um, is the fuse bad for the PKE? Now the fuse for the PKE shares the same fuse as the radio. So if your radio doesn't work, then it's a good chance your PKE isn't gonna work either. Uh, but once you have it, that the light is turned on solid, then you would take the key, turn it back to the off position, not removing the key, the PKE light begins to flash, and that means that the system is ready to be programmed. And if you would bring a operational key fob with a good battery into it in range of the car, that light will turn solid and your, your fob will then be synced up to the car. So if you can get your PKE module to at least get that light flashing before you buy a key fob, then chances are pretty good that uh, everything's going to work out all right for you. So there's another area where you can run into a potential problem with getting the PKE module to be set in programming mode. Uh, I ran into it with this car here. I have seen it before, so I figured it's worth a good mention here. Uh, and that has to do with the ignition lock cylinder. Sometimes on higher mileage cars, uh, the ignition can be a little bit worn from uh, a lot of use. This is a higher mileage car here. And uh, so whenever we go and turn this key back to on position, and we're gonna put this back into programming mode again. So trip odometer button twice and holding the fuel info button. And we're gonna wait for that passive keyless entry light to uh, come on again. So now we have it on and whenever you turn the key to the off position, there is the possibility with the ignition cylinder that's worn out is that when you turn that back, that the basically the signal going to the CCM saying that the key is in the ignition, a worn out ignition cylinder will lose that connection for a moment. And the PKE module wants to see the key remain in the ignition once you turn it back off. And when that happens, if you turn the key back, then the PKE light will not flash and it'll just be straight off. So we'll try and see if we can make that happen here. If I'll just turn this back, maybe force it to happen a little bit. Now, seeing how when I pulled it back, I kind of forced it on this one here because I did go and put a little bit of contact cleaner in that ignition cylinder to kind of prevent it from happening again. But you will notice that there was a little pause in the seatbelt chime, meaning it thought that the key came out of the ignition for a second and therefore we don't have the light flashing. So rather than take it and put it back into programming mode again, if you have that situation, when you go to turn the key back off to get the light to start flashing, just take the key and just turn it real slow. Keep some inward pressure on it and make sure you know you hear that chime that it's just constant there. And then that way you can take your hand off, the light would be flashing at that point and you still know, hey, I am ready for programming mode. 
So the other component of the system that I mentioned previously is the receiving antennas. Now each car would have two of these. Now the first antenna is in the driver's side door and I can show you that here. I've got a uh, door shell. So inside this door here, you can see that the antenna mounted in on the inside of the door. Now note that this is a passenger side door. Uh, your, your convertibles would have an antenna in both the driver's and the passenger door, whereas the coupe cars would have the antenna in the rear cargo area. Now these antennas, they generally don't get damaged. Um, usually not an item that goes bad either. Uh, really the only case would be is if you car had a car that had um, damage on the driver's door and this ended up getting braked. The previous owner tried to remove it for some reason and ended up cracking it. Uh, same goes for the one in the rear cargo area. Generally doesn't get broken, but there is always that possibility that it could have happened in the past, maybe during a time when the carpet was removed, uh, something like that. All right, so now let's get to the most important part of the system, and that would be the key fobs themselves. I have several different key fobs out here on the table in front of me, and we'll take a look at the differences of uh, some of those fobs. But before I get to that, I just want to point out that there are three different modes that the key fobs will work. Uh, so two of them are a passive mode. Passive meaning when you approach the car and get within range that the doors will unlock automatically. So the first mode is a passive mode. You approach the car, you get in range, and both the driver's and the passenger doors will automatically unlock. The second mode is also passive. You approach the car and only the passenger I'm sorry, only the driver door will unlock. And then in that case, you would press the button on the fob to unlock the passenger side. The third mode is a non-passive mode. And for that, when you approach the car, nothing will happen. If you press the button on the fob, you'll be able to unlock the passenger door, but then to have the driver's door unlocked, you would either need to use the key or have the passenger work the switch in the door to open the passenger side. Now for all of this, the details on that, it's all written out in your owner's manual about how to go through those different modes. I'm not gonna go into that detail here. Uh, there's some other videos on YouTube that go into that detail of how to switch in between those modes, but I just thought that I would mention that here before we go any further. Taking a closer look at these fobs here, the first one we'll start with, this is a coupe fob, and the coupe ones will have two buttons, the button on the right unlocking the passenger door when in range, and the button on the left would pop open the rear hatch. Now on your convertible fobs, you only had a single button that would open the passenger door only. Now these ones here, a little bit more to talk about, there's a secret to them, but we'll come back to that. Now for these two fobs here, these are original ones that would have been sold and provided with the cars whenever they were new. You can tell that by looking at the cases on these. See how these cases have a little bit of a texture within the plastic on them? And also if we flip them over, you'll see there's no screw holes in the back of them. These are the clip style cases where at the bottom end here, you will have a small clip that helps keep the two halves together. Now those clips are very fragile and whenever they break, the two halves will just separate like this one is here. You'll see broken tab off there. Sometimes this tab back here on this portion will also break. And that's why you'll see a lot of these original fobs will have a piece of tape around them to hold them together. They're also fragile to the point like how this one is here and we have the point for the key ring is broken off and then when that happens well then the case really isn't good for anything because it's not going to stay on the keys uh, you do still have your internals though which that's a good thing there so one thing before we move on to the other ones that are here um, for you guys the purists out there this case have here this is from a 93 now the 93s would have an orange color in the hatch and door lettering where your 94, 5, and 6 ones, they didn't have any coloring in them at all. So again, that's a, that's a 93 only thing for you guys wanting to be exactly original out there. So with these cases being so fragile, it was natural that replacement cases and fobs came about. So like this one here, this is a convertible fob, and this is a actual GM fob that was issued later uh, for the cars, you could go to a dealer and get these. They have a screwed style case on them. And if we take this apart here, you'll notice that 
I'll move this button out of the way. You'll notice that those internals are a bit different looking than what we have in the internals in this original clip style case here. Now, if you're looking for a replacement case, it's, uh, it's important to know if you have the clipped or the screwed style case. You can't take the internals from a screwed style case and put them into a clipped case. They're actually a little bit too big. This one here is a replacement aftermarket clip style case. You can see we have the clip style internals in them, but if we would actually go to take the screwed internals of the later ones and try to put that in there, it's just a little bit too big and it's not going to fit. And the same goes the other way around. You actually can't take this style internals and put it into a screwed style case. You're going to have some interference with the circuit board where the screw holes are uh, in the circuit board in these uh, later issued ones here. So when I first started off, I mentioned how the coupes have two buttons and the convertible cases had only the single buttons, which you can see there. But whenever I opened them up, if you notice that all of these have two buttons, so what gives, right? Well, you can mix and match the fobs. So for example, you could take a convertible fob here and you could pair it up to a coupe and it's, it's going to work. When you walk up to the car, you'd hit the button and it would unlock the passenger door. Just with this case here, you wouldn't have the ability to open the hatch in the, uh, in the coupes. Same goes for the, uh, the coupe ones. You take a coupe fob and uh, pair it up to a convertible. The door function is going to work. Now, you have the second button there for the hatch. If you would press that hatch button, the rear deck lid will pop open in the convertibles. And that's something that uh, I can demonstrate for you here. So if we look at these fobs here, and this one here is an original convertible one, and if I open it up, you'll see that we have two buttons. And each of these buttons here, the one on the right will do the door, and the one on the left will do the hatch. Just like the ones that I have at a coupe case here, these are the exact same. Now how they made the difference is if you look at the back side of an original clip style case for a convertible on the button, see that there is only a single post there. So whenever you press that button, it only ever pressed the door button. It did have the capability all along to pop the deck lid open, but in a convertible, really, why would you want to do that if the top's up? It's not really a good feature. Now, on these later issued fobs here, like this one for the convertibles, you'll notice they still have two buttons. If we take this fob and we pair it up to convertible and we press either button on these, you will just unlock the passenger door. If we look at the back side of the button, you'll see it has two posts. So whenever it's in the case, wherever you push it, it's going to hit, it's going to hit either one of those buttons, but both of them are just going to operate the passenger side door. Well, that about wraps it up for the C4 uh, PKE system. Uh, like I said, there's other videos, other information out there that you can find on this system to go over the operational uh, procedures of it and you know, further details on programming. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to get in touch with us. You can check out our website, mirrorcorvette.com. While the key fobs can be very hit or miss, um, you know, if those are available, uh, other items like the PKE module, antennas, uh, those are usually pretty more commonly available. So I hope you guys learned something from watching the video today. And, um, you know, as always, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, do all those YouTube things that everybody talks about, and we'll see you next time.